All right, good morning. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is day two of the cinnamon rolls. So this is using the same yeast dough that you used with um, the regular dinner rolls from earlier. The demo for that is on the uh, YouTube channel or you can go into Teams and check it out there. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is the same thing we did last week where you're gonna shape the dough, but instead this time we're gonna be shaping it into uh, a you know, just a spiral, a dinner roll, or a cinnamon roll, sorry. Um, okay, so what you're going to need in addition to this is a couple of ingredients. You're going to need 2.2 ounces or a heaping one fourth cup of white sugar, two ounces or four tablespoons of unsalted butter, 0.2 ounces of cinnamon or two teaspoons of cinnamon and then a pinch of kosher salt okay uh, but we will get into that what you're going to be doing with uh, those ingredients but for now let's focus on the dough okay so this is picking up from yesterday so on your mise en place sheet we're going to start day two so you're going to roll out the dough this should be step six into a rectangle now going to get the dough out of my container. Let me just check the camera. All right. I'm paranoid to, with the camera flashing to make sure it's not doing that again. Okay, now I'm not going to press this out at all with my hands because I'm going to be doing it with a rolling pin. So I'm just going to take my rolling pin and just start to kind of gently press this out. Try to kind of keep it as a rectangle as best you can. So I'm gonna press my hand to kind of even that edge, even that edge, and then I will roll it out again. Okay. Okay, and then if the dough is really starting to stick to the rolling pin, like you see, mine just was just there, just a light sprinkling of flour. Okay, when you're rolling this out, you wanna just make sure that it's completely even edge to edge, meaning like as far as thickness. This is about right, just feel, run your hand across the dough. If you feel that it's starting to get thick in some places and thin in others, you can either press it out with your hand like I'm doing here, or use your rolling pin. So, and I'm just gonna press this out. All right, so now what I've got here, if I use kind of a ruler, is about a 13, a 13 by nine rectangle. So it's a little, it's a little thin, so I'm just gonna kind of press it inward. Totally, just like that. And if it's a little a little thicker in some places, that's fine. You're not making this for a restaurant. Okay. All right. Now, so step six is roll it out into a about a 13 by nine rectangle. Don't have to be exact here. Make it about one uh, one foot by nine inches. That is fine. Okay. For step seven, you're going to cream together the butter, sugar, cinnamon, and salt. Okay, I've already done that here, just to kind of save time. You can do this with your mixer, you can do this with a stand electric hand mixer, or you can do it by hand. Either way, just get it kind of a little bit lighter in color, and you're going to spread that out onto the dough. So it's a little stiffer than just regular softened butter. So you're gonna kind of need to use your hands here. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna pause the camera here real quick, just because this process takes a little bit of time, and I'm sure you don't wanna spend the entire time watching me do this, so I'll pause the camera here just for a second. All 
Okay. Um, one quick note here, guys. Uh, one thing I realized is the step I just gave as far as creaming together the butter and the sugar together was a bit of a mistake here, uh, just because the filling was a lot stiffer than I thought it would be. So what I'm going to recommend for step seven, instead of creaming together the butter, the sugar, the cinnamon, and the salt, go ahead and melt the butter and spread that across the dough and then sprinkle on the cinnamon sugar salt mixture. Okay, uh, what I had to do here, just to kind of be able to spread it out thinly enough, um, was I actually had to double up the amount of butter and sugar and cinnamon and everything. Now, you're more than free to do that, make you know extra cinnamon sugar filling uh, by doubling up our recipe. Um, but I I'm just saying like for me, I had a lot of difficulty doing this. I had to like break it up by hand, put it on. It, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a mess. Um, that being said, I got everything set. I have about an inch or half an inch, I should say, of dough just kind of peeking out of the edge there. Um, like I said, learn from my mistake. I made this way harder on myself than you guys should. I would recommend for step seven, instead of creaming together everything, melt the butter, spread that across, and then sprinkle on your cinnamon sugar mixture. And like I said, if you want to have an extra sugary cinnamon sort of roll, then double up the amounts. Um, but yeah, okay, learn from my mistake. All right, regardless of what method you choose for the filling, after this comes step eight and everything here is the same. So step eight is I'm going to roll the dough up and form the rolls. Now, if you are doing the lab, this is the part I would recommend taking your video on if you did not take it yesterday. So I'm going to kind of roll from the center and just kind of work around to the edges. Now, if your dough is starting to kind of really stick to the table, sprinkle a little bit of flour on the counter and then use a bench scraper to just kind of loosen up the dough a little bit. Okay, so again, just kind of so, okay. my dough is sticking quite a bit to the table. Yours may not. Okay, so I'm gonna roll this up. Okay. All right. Okay. So, step eight is you're gonna roll up the cinnamon rolls, and then when you get to the edge, just kind of press down to seal the dough. Okay, let me just make sure that this is centered. Camera. Yep, okay. All right, so now you go into step nine, which is when we were doing it last week, was the portioning out and cutting up the dough. Now we are going to um, now we're going to cut our rolls. So uh, first things first, just keep in mind that the very edges of the dough are not going to have the cinnamon sugar mixture. So I'm just going to cut that off. Now, I would recommend using a serrated knife when I'll kind of rip through the dough. One thing you can also do if you have it, seeing if I have it here, Dang, it doesn't look like I do. Okay. Uh, nope. Okay. What I was gonna say, what I could, what I'd recommend doing, because this dough is a little tricky to kind of cut with a regular knife, even a serrated knife, is to use a piece of floss or fishing line, work it under the dough, and then cut the dough that way. But since I don't have that, I'm going to just kind of showcase what to do here. Uh, using a regular knife. So to cut it, I'm just gonna cut just roughly down the middle. Now, careful when I cut using my knife, I'm not really pressing down that much. I'm just kind of sawing gently while putting as very little pressure on the knife as possible. So each of these, I'm just going to, I'll lightly flour the knife is I'm going to just saw, and again, I'm just putting very little pressure 
on the knife. I'm going to cut each of those pieces into half. Okay, just be careful of the counter underneath. If it's a counter that your parents really don't want you messing up, make sure you're just maybe putting a cutting board underneath. And there I have very rough looking cinnamon rolls. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'll just pause it just so you guys don't have to watch that. But when we come back, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so my cinnamon rolls are cut. Yeah, the edges are a little bit rough. Like I said, normally I have floss that I use to kind of cut the you know, cut the rolls with, but unfortunately I didn't have that here, so I used this regular knife. All right, so once you have the doughs cut up, you're gonna go to step 11, or sorry, steps 10, which is to place in a greased pan and let this proof. So I'm going to place the rolls here. Now, it's okay if the pan is a little bit crowded. You actually kind of want that. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Just like that. Okay. So I'm going to place the cinnamon rolls in. Lightly grease the top of them. Okay. Now you can bake this in you know, in cake tins, you can place the cinnamon rolls in a nine by nine pan. Heck, you can even, if you really want to try it, do it in a muffin tin. I personally would not do that, but you can, by all means, if that's what you got, you can do that. Um, so now from here, we go to step 11. This is where some of you guys may make a different choice here. So some of you, what you can do is you can just like the yeast rolls, you can let this proof for about an hour, hour and a half at room temperature, just until they've puffed up a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it into my professional proof box. Let me see if I can move the camera here. Okay, I'm gonna put it into that right there, and that's gonna probably get this done in less than 30 minutes. Okay, but that is completely up to you. Okay. The other option that you have is you can put cover this up, let it proof in the fridge overnight. So you can bake it tomorrow. Um, just make sure that if you do go that option that you make sure to um, let the dough come up to room temperature for about 30 minutes or so before you bake them. Um, like I said, what I'm going to do is cover them up put them in the proof box for about 30 minutes, and then they will be ready to bake. Uh, regardless of which option you choose, after that, you're gonna go on to step 12, which is to bake at 375 degrees for 20 minutes, okay? So, this is what the cinnamon rolls look like now. I'm gonna put them in the proof box. Um, I'll see you guys in about 30 minutes here. So I'm gonna pause the video. All right, while we're waiting for the cinnamon rolls to proof, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a very quick icing to put on the top of these cinnamon rolls when they're done. So you can make this ahead of time if you would like. So in this bowl, I've got about five ounces or one and one fourth cup of powdered sugar. I have here two ounces or um, four tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna put in about two to three tablespoons of milk and then half a teaspoon of vanilla. So just to do that, all you're gonna do is just simply combine them together in a bowl and just whisk them together. And again here, you can probably tell I'm not being as precise as I was with the rest of this recipe. That's because it's just not necessary here. You just stir this together and then thin it out with milk uh, you know, to get the right consistency that you want. So here, I'm just going to whisk it together. Wait until 
You see all the powdered sugar is gone in order to make adjustments. So you can see this is really, really thick. So I'm just gonna add an extra splash of milk here. And there we go. Then I have a nice frosting to put on the top here. Now this will um, this will melt a little bit when you put it onto the very hot cinnamon rolls. Uh, so you probably want it just around the side of being a little too thick, but that is completely up to you. Okay. So right now, again, we are just waiting for the cinnamon rolls to proof. I've got my oven preheated. You're gonna want your oven to be preheated about 30 minutes or so before the rolls are done. When they're done proofing, I mean. All right, so this is what my dough looks like about 30 minutes after proofing. See, it's proofed up and just a little bit slack. That is perfect. Now, again, you should be able to kind of touch in. It feels a little light and airy. It's completely okay if your cinnamon rolls are kind of compact and touching, that is fine. We're gonna bake this now for about 20 minutes. Again, I would check it at the 18 minute mark. You can always add time, you can't really take it away. All right, I'm gonna sh put this in and I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. All right, and there we have it. That is set, ready to go. All right, let it cool down for about five minutes or so. You'll see some sugar and stuff still bubbling on the bottom here, just let it sit. Then after about five, 10 minutes or so, you can use your frosting drizzle it over the top. I added a little bit of milk here just to kind of thin it out just so it so I can pour it. Okay, and that is it for today. So like I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure you have a photo uh, of the beginning and take a photo of your finished product. All right, that is it. Make sure you ask questions if you have any and have a good one.